Hello, this is Black Country Blokes chewing the fat. Listen, listen, listen. I've been hearing a lot lately about men don't talk, but in my experience, men do talk, just people aren't listening. So it's going to be me and a group of blokes discussing our struggles and victories through life. Warning, there may be some bad language, so apologies to all the moms, especially my own. Let's get going. Listen, listen, listen. I've been here. This is the Black Country Blokes Tuna Fat with me, Kev Dillon, Lee Cadman, Aaron Jew. Now, today we've got a special guest, Marcus Leonard, um, who comes from uh, mental health within the Black Country. Before we all get into it, because we're live, I apologise if there is any bad language. We are roaring uncles. And at the end of the day, we're just four blokes having a rattle, and I hope it helps you. So, thank you, Marcus, for coming on today. Welcome. Now we've had we've had you on before, so if anyone would like to check out Marcus's other things, they're available on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. But today, like we're all going through the same thing, this lockdown. And as I was explaining to someone earlier, I say, some days we get out of bed and we're bulletproof. Nothing getting our way. The world is our oyster. And other days, it's hard to get dressed. It's hard to find the motivation to brush your teeth. So I, I want everyone to realise you're not alone with this. And it's okay not to be okay sometimes. So I'll hand over to you, Marcus. Yeah, it's um, it's strange times, and I think whether you're one of the people that are doing well with it and enjoying the time, or you're suffering with it and it's proving difficult, I think motivation is a big, big problem. And you know, when we when we look at the um, the circuits that uh, govern motivation and help us with our serotonin release, they're very very well linked to things like um, routine and structure. And you see, this is one of the things that's been um, changed. Are you were getting my voice all right, or am, am I breaking up? I can hear myself breaking up a little bit. Is it all good? No, but it'll be fine. Smash you. So, so, you know, when if you think about your um, previous uh, routine that you'd, that you'd enjoy when you get up in the morning, starting with cleaning your teeth, having something to eat, getting out the door, starting to see new people, you know, a bit of vitamin D from the sunshine, um, going about your business, um, not in a way where you're thinking about where can I go and where can't I go. Times are very different now. Even though there might be the things that you always wanted to do, you know what, I just can't be bothered. I wish I could stop at home and watch Holmes Under the Hammer or Richard and Judy or who's ever on now. Even though that might be uh, might have been on your list of things that you thought you preferred to do, that big change in routine that, that is forced upon us now is, um, is bound to have an effect. Well, I always say I love being lazy. My favourite thing is lying on the couch doing nothing, but that's because I've worked so hard at the gym. I've been out there doing things. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a holiday, whereas it's when you've got to stay in. But I'm, I'm very blessed. I mean, I've got a woman who I adore, a child who are, it keeps me young, playing all these games. But even then, it puts the strongest relationships under the cost, doesn't it? Because you're used to, I'm stressed, so I'll go to the gym. My wife's stressed, so she goes to Mary Hill. My, uh, my child can go to nanny and granddad's. But that, that's why it puts the stress under you. And it's and, and this is very much um, an example of, of what. Uh, sorry, can't see you there. There you go. Um, a really good example of, of what we call CBT in action and about how important your thoughts are. It was Shakespeare who most recently said it, it's not the things that are, are a problem for us, it's, it's the way we think about them. And if you imagine. Um, at any one time, I think we've touched on this before, a stream of thoughts accompanying everything that we do in life. And if you expose yourself to a lot of media coverage on the COVID situation, your thoughts will be, uh, if you're not careful, will take on the train of, I can't do this, I mustn't do that, if only I could have done that, I can't wait till I'm doing this. And, and it's creating this list of things that are not in your current um, selection, if you like. And that's never a good thing. We know that that affects people badly. So one of the things that we teach people to do within mental health 
is not just to rely on that stream of thoughts coming past as if it's something that we can't affect because we normally just we just watch them like thoughts coming down a conveyor belt we just experience them as they come along and it's learning that skill to get in front of the gap that we see go upstream and start to drop thoughts on there deliberately about do you know what this is just like a long weekend do you know what this is what I'd do if I had a day off. Do you know what? This is something that, that's, that's got a feel of rest and recuperation to it. And one day I'll, I'll be needing to go out and do 14 things at once. And I'll be going back to this day and wishing I could have it back. And, it's, and I know times are tough for a lot of people, but managing the way that you think can be the difference between this being quite a difficult time and it being a very manageable one. On something then, I was on the phone to a very good friend earlier, and we were saying, like, normally, if you have had some previous thing go wrong, or someone says something nasty to you, or hurtful, or you read something on Facebook or Instagram, you by the time you've got to work or you've gone to the shops, you've had a hundred different experiences. Someone stepped on your foot getting on the bus, where someone said, Hello, you're having a nice day. So it's easier to forget those negative thoughts because you're in the real world. But I think when you're isolated, the problem can be you can get locked in that one frame of thought. That's a really good way of looking at it, yeah. And I suppose that if you think about um, how you would deal with negative thoughts day to day, one of the things would be just moving around in society. Distraction is working away. So you could say, using that analogy and that really good example, that people are having... A, you know, the coping strategy is taken off them. Because the problem itself is still there, isn't it? It's just how you avoid the problem. Whereas maybe this time where we can start reflecting on, well, was I just worrying about silly billiness? Or was that actually important? Am I happy with my circumstance at the moment? Or is it something that I choose to pursue? Is now the time to be studying foreign languages? Is now the time to be researching cars or... Now is the prime time. If you're interested in it, research it, because the one thing that we have got at the moment is time, and we've got so much information out there at the moment. Let's pick yeah. up information that's good for us and which is damaging us. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Marcus, and I would just... always... Sorry. Apologies. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to ask you something on just what Kev said there. Uh, maybe you have something from like um, uh, an advocacy or a mental health perspective so like kev said we've got a lot of time now we can do a lot of stuff that maybe we've always wanted to do but um there's some statistics and i just heard this on a podcast today myself that only 12 percent of the population can work without structure and one of the things i recognize that it whilst being in isolation just more so this week is that because i've not had a structure that i'm used to and i've just kind of willy-nilly just got up and done what i've wanted and here and there i've started to struggle so the last two or three days myself and me and kev had a conversation today where I just found myself in a bit of a funk. And then when I connect the dots and think, is it because I've got rid of that structure previously um, that's caused me to do that? Um, it, have you had any links or is there anything that you that you can kind of stamp and approve or that actually we should maybe try and get some structure in our lives, especially as we continue to go through lockdown because we can't really necessarily see an end. Would it help people, do you think? Yeah, it's a cracking question. Um, I, I'll, I'll take your word for it on the 12%, but that... Um, mm -hmm. I'm surprised it's, um, yeah, the, the, we're back to the award circuit. And I don't know if we've used the analogy before. There, there was, um, I was asked to explain depression to school children. And, and this is about when our reward circuit doesn't stop working, it goes wrong. Now, if you imagine that you, the simple analogy is imagine that your, if your motivation, what, your mojo, whatever you call it, is a little smurf. And you can't talk to him and you can't reason with him or her. Um, but what you have got is a big rucksack full of Smarties. You can make them blue ones if you like. And what you do is you throw Smarties in the direction that you want your Smurf to go, your motivation, if you like. Now, if you, your Smurf and you will get a relationship on based on how many Smarties you use per hour and how far you throw them to keep your Smurf engaged in going, finding the next one and the next one. You know, we hear from high achieving people that suffer with things like perfectionism and burnout 
you know, who've learned to, I don't know, construct a, a slingshot and fire one of these little purple smarties 400 yards. And this Smurf just thinks, no chance. I can't, I can't even see that. I'm not going anywhere. Or we pour a big pile of blue Smarties on the floor and he sits down and he just starts eating them without any inclination to, to do anything next. And that's a really good way to look at the reward circuit in that um, when we need structure, and I think you're absolutely right, it's that we need those Smarties just being thrown the right distance in front of us, just in the right direction and just at the right time. So that the, the evidence-based treatment for depression is what we call behavioral activation. And, right. and, it's, and it's linked very keenly to what you've just mentioned in that we, we, we ask people to think back to a good day or we ask that people to think about a day that they, they think would be useful or enjoyable to them and set it out like an itinerary, a bit like a menu and say, you know, what would you do in the morning? What would you like to do? What have you done in the morning? And working through that either by hour or by units in the day, so two units in the morning, three units in the afternoon, so whichever suits them, and then use that as a structure. And, and also, if people can sometimes struggle with the idea of time and feel that they're pressured into doing things, and I've only got till then to do it, uh, to do it and it sounds a bit like a deadline, that reminds them of school or work or things that are um, not overtly pleasurable. You know, when you take the kids to McDonald's for an ice cream, you, you're not, it's not all run by the clock. But one thing you can do to ease yourself into that is reverse the clock and use what we call the astronaut psychology. So rather than saying in 10 minutes, we'll go and do it, you, you set your clock and say, right, for the next 20 minutes, I'll spend... Um, I'll spend some time looking on the internet about how I learn to play the guitar or I'll, I'll, I'll spend half an hour and I'll set my clock backwards, my astronaut watch, my timer. Mm -hmm. And all I'll do is I'll look about, I'll find how many videos I can see to service my own car um, or, or local places that would be good to take a walk or within the confines of the recommended um, movement. Um, and, and, and these are tips and techniques that I think we're, um, to put it the way you put it, is to bring a bit of structure back, meaningful structure into uh, people's lives so that they get enjoyment from things that they wouldn't have done. Thank you for sharing that. When I phone up people and I say, I say one thing I struggle with, I wake up and I've maybe I've woke up a bit too late because I've started watching films. And then I feel guilty. And then I, at the end of the day, I go, what have I actually achieved today? I went, well, maybe your body's screaming out because you, you work from 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock, five days a week. Then you're doing this. Then you're doing your football, your boxing, your cricket, your swimming. Maybe what your body's screaming out for is, you know what? Have a rest. Have a mm -hmm. rest. And when you're ready to do something, when your body and your mind has had the necessary rest, then we'll start going right then. What should we do now? Mm. Yeah. I, uh, and I think this is where um, people just don't know the difference between a weekend and a day now. Somebody sent me, um, somebody sent me quite a funny meme on WhatsApp today, and it was, uh, I've, I've got my new clock, and instead of hours and, and, and two hands, it just had days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, uh, and our body clocks are just, well, mine, particularly it's just I really have to remind myself what day it is you know um th there's a lot of um routine that brings us into focus with our lives and yeah I, I, you can find yourself just wazzing through I've not managed to get into it this time but wazzing through the next thing on Netflix and getting something from it um and I think somewhere between doing the things that you normally enjoy and routine is it's going to be different for everybody, but I think when we have a problem with something, if we within within mental health and therapy and low level therapy, we always say one of the things to do is write it down and measure it. You know, so if you if you are finding yourself cascading from one day to the next into things not being fulfilled by them, not feeling like you want to get up, write it down and map it out and do what we call just simple diaries a daily diary, a mood diary, but where you separate it into chunks. 
so that if you're finding yourself watching too much telly, thinking you're not doing enough of the things you should be doing or too much of the things you shouldn't, split it up and chalk it out. You know, no point in um, thinking about the day that's gone. You lose the battle and you win the war. Forget the day that's gone. No point in beating yourself up over it. Think about the day that's coming and use the lessons of yesterday to inform the way you want tomorrow to go. My daily routine, and I changed it last week. <clears throat> Every day I wake up with my, uh, with my Jasmine. And we normally did a Joe Wicks workout. And then I do a little video, which I put on Facebook and Instagram. And I stopped doing it. And because I was in exercise, it made me lazier. But just having that one minute, 50 seconds, where it is just to go, I've been here, this is Kev Dylan, and saying something positive, I'm having to acknowledge that in my own mind to say it outwards. And that, that gets me in a good frame yeah. of mind for the rest of the day. Have you got any yeah. special routines, Lee? Um, really, I, I've just started exercising a bit more, um, but that's recent. But in truth, for me myself, I find it quite refreshing having have it being able to have the time off and not have to worry about going back to work. You know, I've worked fr fr from the from before I left school. I've been full on work, 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 and I'd I'd take a holiday from work. But then you're always looking at, at when you're going back. Whereas at the moment, there's not a date that I'm going back. So it's quite nice to stop and, and just spend that time without having to think about going back to work. Because of um, your daughter's condition with drug syndrome, you've often said you'd love to spend more time with her. And that's the one thing that money, money can't buy time, can it? No, that's right. Um, and I'm using that time to, to spend more time with her and, and, and do a few more things, um, which I'm enjoying. So it, it's been quite refreshing, to be totally honest, at the moment. But I have found myself today just getting a bit bored, a bit, OK, I, I, I feel like I need to do something now. I've been full on for since I left school. It's been even more full on the last five years since my daughter's been born. Um, uh, so it has been nice to have that break, but I think it's going to start catching up with me this week. Um, and I'll feel like I need to do more. Um, I have got um, a question, actually, if, if uh, you don't mind answering uh, any of us, really, any advice. Um, it's from C Steve Hansel. And it, um, I'm going to read it out. It says, guys, quick question. If you get chance during this lockdown, I'm finding my anxiety going manic at times. I personally feel like I'm going to infect others, even though I have not got this horrible virus. Is there any method of grounding me? When this happens, it sometimes feel like it's not really, it's not real, which then causes it to be even worse. Thank you for the message, Steve and uh, Marcus. Over to you. Yeah. So, so this is um, this is one of the uh, the regular um, bits of feedback that we're getting in mental health. Um, of course. Um, when we get anxious, uh, one of the problems, well, there's a number of problems. One is, one is uncertainty. Um, this is a big problem that can fuel the type of thoughts that we experience. Now, unlike, unlike a lot of things um, that people get anxious about, this is real. This, this, is not, um, this is not something, you know, we can be, we've all got a phobia, you know, um, if you don't like injections or spiders or... Um, you know, you name it, balloons. Um, deep down, you might think to yourself, I know it's not going to hurt me, but I'm still frightened of it. When people are frightened of things that they know or could hurt them or they could hurt the people around them, this is when things can get out of control. And so number one, um, there are services that are up and running and geared to take on these types of problems. So the NHS has put a lot of time and effort into um, thinking about how we can help people with this. So do reach out to your local services. In the meantime, um, look at the amount of media coverage that you are watching. Um, if one of our problems as a human being is, it's not in our ability necessarily to take information on, it's the ratios with which we um, mix that with daily life. So we we have a. You'll know yourself if you if you're thinking that you want a, a different model of car. You you want to buy a I don't know um, 
a fancy BMW, uh, and you start looking on Auto Trader, you think about, you know, this is the color I want, and all of a sudden you start to notice them when we're allowed out. And you drive down the road and you think, there's what that, you know where they live, you know where they park, you can see one a mile off. And, and we, what's called, we become vigilant to that. And your mind tunes into those. Now, if somebody asks you, yeah, but how many Volvos did you see? You'd be kind of like, well, I didn't see any. I was, I was looking for BMWs. And so the problem is that we, we start to see more of the thing that we're looking for. And you can imagine with something like a germ, a symptom, you know, a person who might have it and not know it, there's just no end to that. Somebody can, who doesn't look 100% or it is, could potentially be a, car- a carrier, and, and your imagination can just feed the circuits that are providing the anxiety. So it's, um, it's a very good question. There's no specific cure to this. There's no easy answer. But again, know that everybody else is in the same boat. And, and, you know, I've spoken to other people about this and it's important to know, and this might seem counterintuitive, that when we become aware of one risk, we can somehow pretend that all other risks are somehow invisible or disappear. You know, we've still got heart disease. We've still got getting run over as you cross the road. We've still got all the general things that our bodies are, deal, uh, are built to deal with. So it, it's about keeping balance, not uh, focusing too much on what the media have got to say. You know, if you've, if you've got the news running in the background and it's all you're listening to, you can imagine your, um, just your threat circuits will just not take a break. Now, one of the really useful things that people say I've not got enough time to do. And this is backed up by a lovely piece of research. It's not very well publicized, but it it won a Nobel Peace Prize. And I think it was by Kathleen Blackburn and it was about um, meditation. Now, when you you stay stressed for long periods of time, it can have physiological, well, does have physiological effects. It shrinks part of your brain and it can even start to affect the way that your DNA is closed off at the, uh, at the bottom of the chain. Now, what this lady discovered was that 13 minutes, one, three, 13 minutes of um, uh, mindful meditation a day is, is um, a very good way to restore um, your, the health of your DNA. So you, you, you can't get much better than that. So, so I would, I would recommend to anyone um, who's suffering in this way, number one, um, regulate the amount of news that you're watching. Um, if you can, don't watch the news and just go to government websites in order to get your information. Number two, reach out to the services that are set up to deal with this because they're there, the, the phone lines are active um, and there are trained people to deal with it. And, and number three, do... Um, do think about mindful meditation if that is something that you think you can do it, it will help hey steve um you've been on the show twice god bless you but i'm someone who's suffered with uh, panic attacks anxiety attacks all my adult life and normally what i have to do is when i'm having one come on i can't breathe i feel it getting there and i get dizzy and i feel like i'm gonna faint what i normally do is i can run upstairs not to alarm jasmine and i can have that Bit, but because Kate's been working upstairs, I've been downstairs, then I felt really trapped because I didn't want my little girl to see how frightened I was. So it is, it is tricky. And then, yeah. but what I do, I go and find somewhere, I have to relax myself, close my eyes, take deep breaths. Nick Davis talks a lot about this on some of the previous episodes. Get into that lemur-like state, close my eyes, and say some affirmations. Is that the right word? Nice things I've run over to me head. And I have to reassure myself and go, you know how to breathe. You've been breathing all your life. If anyone could forget how to breathe, it'd be you, Kev. But we haven't got to remember it. And calm yourself down and just remind yourself it's going to be okay. But you're not the only person, Steve, out there. Some of the toughest buggers I've ever met in my life have this. But you've got to accept it and try and ride the wave. 
as Marcus said, if it does become too much, then reach out and ask for professional help. Absolutely. Can I, can I just quickly add to, add to that, guys, if that's okay? So that's some great points there. I think um, especially with the mindfulness and meditation that Marcus mentioned and what you were saying, Kev, um, there's also, again, don't quote me on the exact science behind this. I'm, I'm always fascinated and I'm always trying to learn more about it. But it's proven that if you can reduce, if you can concentrate more on reducing negativity rather than just increasing positivity, that will actually help like your levels of happiness and fulfillment. So effectively, what, what we're trying to say is if you see negative emotions or negative people around you or negative news, for example, like the scaremongering and then the consistent feed that just keeps scaring you, that's actually more detrimental to your health rather than you just saying positive affirmations. So the affirmations are fantastic, I think, on their own. I definitely use them myself without anxiety. But one thing I've consciously done in the last six months is anything negative, it's out of my feed. I just snooze. Like we have the ability on Facebook to snooze stuff. On my Instagram, I snooze stuff because I know that one piece of negative news can almost outweigh like a hundred positive things. And, and I suppose we can use that across life. You can have 10 compliments, but you get that one dislike and instantly that's what you remember. So again, I don't know the exact science behind it, but let's definitely try and take on Marcus's advice there that let's, let's reduce the negativity. So even if it's the words that we say, let's just try and reframe those with our loved ones and say positive stuff. If it's, if you've seen something that scared you on the television and it's not from the government website, let's, let's just not go back there again. Yeah. Like our, yeah. our, mental, our mental diet, I wake up, I put the news, 4,000 people have died in an earthquake in Brazil. I live in Kingswind, so God bless you. And I haven't got to have that emotional thing. And then I watch Jeremy Kyle. He's run off with his sister and had an affair. Then I put the news back on. Then I watch EastEnders. Then, so all I've had all day, all that's been thrown at me is negative, 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 negative. And all I'm doing is grabbing on to anything I can catch. How about we wake up in the morning, put your favourite song on, do a bit of exercise, then watch a funny YouTube video, be it pandas laughing or a bit of boxing. Or If we can fill our, our, our missing time in with something that's positive, then we will feel better. But if we're only there going, oh, my God, another one's died. She's having an affair. He's, that is what we're going to take on board. What's your theories on that, Marcus? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that point that Aaron's made is an absolute cracker. Um, you know, we uh, I was sat out in the sun earlier um, for 10 minutes and I wouldn't call it sunbathing because, as you know, I'm up north and I don't think we should do that. That's a, that's a joke. But, um, and I was thinking about, you know, why we spend, you know, all year and clambering to this idea that we go abroad or we go somewhere sunny and we sit in the sun. And I was thinking about what is it? Why is that? You know, that there must be a good reason for it. And, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if we could find out the most common thing that people think about while they're sunbathing. Because I think that's why people do it. And, and I think just as Aaron said then, it, it's not necessarily the positive things that they're thinking about because they'll probably be silly like, oh, won't my tan be good and won't it look good against that white shirt I've got because I know my freckles will be joined up. I don't think that's particularly good for anybody's mental health, but um, what it is, it's going to be an absence of all the negative thoughts that would usually be validated by the things that are going on around. And I think he's absolutely right that, that it's just the absence of those that is so powerful you know, I remember, um, it's been a long time since I've even heard the phrase <laughs> EastEnders, but somebody did a piece of work and it was about the time when, you know, the new Rambo, no, not the new Rambo film. He was still this side of 70 when he made it. I think it was the one in Cambodia. Do, do you remember it? Um, not First Blood. It, 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 yeah, he was going up the Cambodian River. You must remember it. Rambo film. Um, and he was... Um, yeah, or oh, was it Cambodia? I'm sure it was Cambodia. Um, I've forgotten my thread now. Sorry, but he, he'd, um, it was about that time, and somebody was saying that the, the opening sequence was so violent. It was the most violent opening sequence that there's ever been to a film, and so many people got shot within a minute. And somebody else did a piece of research, and, and it was angry, aggressive, or a violent or, or violent acts 
per minute. And I think EastEnders outscored that film by a factor of 10. Wow. And it's kind of like, you, you see research like that and you think, wow, why do we run to that every day? You know, it might be, I, I don't know, I, I, luckily I've never watched it. Is it the storyline? I, I don't know. But you just think, what effect is that having? You know, it's, it's yeah, risky for a biscuit. With, um, like, with, um, I, I don't watch EastEnders either, but like Rambo, to someone myself who's never been in a battle, in a war, you can dismiss that as the movies, but in EastEnders mm. where it's relatable stresses and you go, all he reminds me of Bill, and all she reminds me of Sandra. And that brings the stress home to you, doesn't it? Mm. I would imagine so. Well, Bill, have you got any thoughts on anything? Marcus, can I just ask a, um, a question regarding, obviously there's going to be a, a big impact on mental health with people working within NHS and care. Um, on your side of things, are there any plans going forward to how we can help and deal with that? So can you just, I got the last bit, Lee, just a bit before that. Um, yeah, so it's really, it's just a question about uh, on the NHS and um, and the care sector. They're going to suffer really quite quite bad mental health, I feel, after what's what they've been yeah. been subject to. Is there anything we can we can do to, to kind of help that? Is there anything in your pipeline that you're doing to, to, to help? Yeah, really good point. It's, uh, it's, Mental health, um, as bizarrely, uh, and, and I'm not talking about the, the serious mental health where people are on quite um, uh, liberating medication, but the day-to-day -day mental health that I deal with, so moderate anxiety and depression, where from an outpatient kind of point of view, if you like, we've seen a marked reduction in the amount of people coming forward for that. And we don't know whether that's mental health has, has subsided in the community and people don't need it, or they're just not coming forward for it because they think we're closed. So we're not sure. Um, but as our um, as that slack has come into our system, we've we've asked um, we've asked colleagues and staff to go across and help um, a lot of our a, a lot of our. Uh, professionals are mental health nurses by background and so they're able to go in and and go up the medical chain if you like and help with our um colleagues who work on wards um anyone who's been contaminated or is at risk of infection uh, being seriously ill or family and who can't um commit to duties there they've got to be backfilled so our staff go to backfill them um Whilst this is happening, there are some uh, designated teams within the NHS who are now looking at supporting people that have just um, posed a question about specific difficulties with COVID. And um, just as you've brought up, staff members who've been um, sadly exposed to it and who uh, find the situation overwhelming. Of course, now we're in the um, we're in the terrible situation now where we actually know members of staff who've lost their lives over this, um, and and their family members who are uh, who are also in in um, e either in the process of or have lost staff, uh, family members themselves. So we're we we're, we've got helplines um, set up and um, and services are gearing up to work on uh, the traumatic effects that this might bring because um, it, it's we're dealing with or the, the nurses, the medical nurses are dealing with situations that they can normally get away from. They can normally come away from the hospital and go home, but this is there's very much a tangible link between this. So it's, it's not as easy to separate themselves. So we are expecting a psychological um, backlash from this um, and we're gearing up for it it's a really good question those those nurses doctors cleaners who are out there working extremely hard for not the money they should be having but then they have to go back to their homes with their own children their own partners and everything and they're, they're worrying about taking the badness 
back home to their beloved, but they can't let down the people they're looking after and what tremendous people. And I hopefully, after all this, whatever government is in or is out, can actually sit back and say thank you to all these people, the binmen, the firemen, the, the shelf stackers, the all the people who put their lives at risk. And if six months ago, their jobs didn't matter, and look how important they are now. These people, yeah. brilliant, wonderful, brave people, are putting their, 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 the people before their own families. They need a round of applause. Not just every first when we get out there and do our little two minutes. We have to, when we yeah. see them, yeah. thank them and just say thank you. Because I'll tell you something, gang. Thank you don't cost nothing, but it can mean the world to you when you hear it, and it's a genuine thank you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to um, uh, kind of go on about the NHS, but it it really strikes home. You know, I know personally of a staff member whose partner is um, a nurse and caught COVID on the ward, um, came home with it, nearly killed him, was really close, got better, got the uniform back off and went back to work. It's like, wow, that's um, – talk about getting back in there. It's um, incredible. No no fuss, no drama. Just got it back on and went back in. And, you know, and, and, and the people that, you know, imagine being a um, healthcare assistant or a cleaner in the NHS. It's like, that's impressive. That is impressive. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they, they do deserve everybody's um, – admiration and uh, and what have you it's yeah marcus i've just had, had um stephen hansel um who who had an appointment i don't know whether you'll be able to answer this and i don't really like putting it on your spot but he has asked the question so i'd, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, ask it at least and you may be able to help um so we did have an appointment with the nhs um which was ca- for, for mental health which was cancelled um due to the covid19 um, is there any way, is there, um, a, a, I don't know, a, a call like we're doing now um, where you can do a video call or something along the lines just to get him, get him that help? And it would be, um, it, it would be difficult to know. So, so, so mental health is split into many areas and it could be any number of departments. Um, the, uh, obviously with the social distancing uh, difficulties, we are minimising the amount of face-to-face contact. So they've all been cancelled for people, unfortunately. But That's what, what we are trying to do is is offer um, a replacement telephone appointment or um, video conference call. Now, I'm, I'm not sure, and I won't be able to comment on anybody's individual um, experience, um, and I'm not sure which departments are in the process of... of um, reorganizing themselves one of the things we're doing as quickly as possible is bringing a digital strategy into the um into the mental health services in dudley so that we can offer people um digital interventions that are evidence-based there's a bit of a time lag with that but um for anybody who had an appointment hasn't got one but feels the need one um i would say uh take steps to get in touch with um, that department or uh, just have a quick look on the internet um, about what's in place. Is that all right? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, no, I don't no, know. Uh, I'll put you on the spot there. I know it's, it's kind of an awkward question, right. but, but um, at least we can now point them in the right direction that things are coming through. And, and hopefully uh, within the next few weeks, we'll have something where you can contact and go through that. But your advice at this point is to contact uh, whichever department it's cancelled from, and hopefully they can arrange it, arrange something from there. Did you get that, Marcus? Have we lost Mark? Sorry, you you went off there, Lee. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so... no, sorry. My, my phone was a call <laughs> came from my phone and out. Not not a problem. Yes, I was just explaining that. Um, so your advice really is for, for Steve at the moment is to contact uh, the department 
that has cancelled and, and hopefully within the next few weeks they'll have something in place where if he does need that face to face to contact I, unless it's very specialist, I, I doubt there'll be a face-to-face -face appointment because of the, right. the COVID regulations. But, but I'm if you, sorry, if you I mean over, look over on the internet. The, um, yeah, yeah. Look on, look on the um, Trust website and, okay. and look for that department specifically. Um, no. We've turned a lot of staff over to telephone appointments. So we should be able to um, at least put him in sight of the changes and what to expect next. Brilliant. He's just said, he's just sent another message thanking you for, for your advice as well. Yeah, well, we we are um, we're we're as keen to get hold of patients who need us as they are to get hold of us. So so if he if he if he can just look around the normal avenues that he try and get hold of us with, um, he will get hold of somebody. We've most of the staff that are now working from home and et cetera, have been given mobiles and uh, we're trying to set up networks where we can filter calls through to people. So, so do try and, uh, yeah, do try and get in touch with us. That's great. That's great. Wonderful. Well, thank you ever so much for coming on, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. It's always good to talk to me. You've got some great ideas and, you know, the, the, the way that you, um, aim to look after your community is is absolutely magic it's uh, you know people friends often ask me about what i think about the situation at the minute and, it, and it's um you can see communities um looking after each other uh, uh far more than they normally might even you know even dare i say it the government um i won't tell you i vote for but even the government putting into um putting into place quite, you know, people come first measures, you know, nothing else matters apart from your health. These are great messages that we might not be able to see normally that forget everything as long as you're well, as long as you're safe, that's what matters. You know, I think these are the big positives to come out of the situation that we're in. So it's, um, it's, it, it's, it, I'm sure we'll talk about it for years to come. Hopefully people haven't just got that short-term memory where it's, you know, like when you're on holiday. When I get back off this holiday, I'm going to change my life. Then by the time you got at the airport, you're back to being your grumpy old self. Yeah. Let's yeah. take away from this. Hopefully this isolation will bring us closer together. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've started I've started ringing people that I wouldn't, um, that, you know, I've lost touch with. You know, in the evenings, I think, well, now's the time to do it. I've got a bit of time on my hands. Ring them up, see how they're doing. Send them a text. It's um, it's these. This is the time to do it now, isn't it? Make those connections that we might not normally have. Just as you're doing now with this this format. Very impressive, by the way. No, oh, thank you very much. I've uh, I'm growing I'm growing my beard throughout it, but I said I won't cut my hair until my my brother Ben Taylor from RNL Barbers reopens. So by the time I get to see him, I'll have cascading <laughs> hair up my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. We're living with the Hendersons in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. I look I like sticking yeah. the gun. My wife calls me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's yeah. for today. Once again, thank you so much, Marcus, Aaron, Lee. Always a pleasure. If, um, before we go, just well done. To everyone for doing it for those who are still going out to work for those who have had to stay at home for those who are child minding for those grandparents who long to see the grandchildren hopefully the important thing is we'll get through it together so until next week for our bit listen 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 and that's a wrap for another show but if there are any comments or messages that you would like us to read out for our next podcast please be in touch there are also lots of different organisations at the bottom of this page and hopefully they can help you or someone you care about. Please share this to spread the word. Until we talk next time, ta a bit. Listen, listen.